Jackie Collins has another page turner, and she's already sold over 200 million copies worldwide, translated into 40 languages. They're glamorous, they're raunchy, they're thrilling. And the question is, are they sort of secretly autobiographical when it comes to Lucky Santangelo? Lucky Santangelo, the protagonist, if you will, from the watering holes in the south of France to the runways of Milan, to the glittering casinos of Las Vegas, the Santangelo's rule, and Lucky will always come out on top. And this time it's an epic family saga filled with love, lust, and revenge by Jackie Collins, who's on the other end of our AT&T line from her self-designed mansion in Beverly Hills. How nice to talk to you again. How nice to talk to you, Michael. Well, and you know how I love writing about strong women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you and your sister are a formidable pair, that's for sure. Uh, Joan Collins, I understand you went and met another formidable woman not that long ago at Buckingham Palace. I did. You know, I was lucky enough to get the OBE, which is the Order of the British Empire, mm -hmm. and it was given to me by the Queen. And so I had to go to Buckingham Palace, which was fantastic, and then I had to meet the Queen, and she pinned this medal on me, and she said to me, Oh, Miss Collins, I know that you've written a lot and lot of books. And I said, yeah, not bad for a school dropout, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I don't think was quite what she was expecting me to say, but she was fantastic. And it was a great honor, you know, to get that, because I have written a lot of books. I've written 32 books. Mm. And it is not bad for a school dropout. And I would say to any women listening in, if you want to do something in life, follow your dream. Because I was not encouraged to write. I... I came bottom in everything except composition, but I knew it was what I wanted to do, so I followed my dream, and that's so important for women to do. And in the Sant'Angelo's, Lucky always follows her dream. That, but that's a bit cheeky to say something that to, like that to Her Majesty, isn't it? It was very cheeky, yeah. yeah. And I didn't wear a hat either. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I, you know, I hope that uh, she gave you the OBE before you told her you were starring in Sharknado 3. I did not tell her that, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Oh, what? yeah, Sharknado 3. I'm doing a teeny cameo in it, and it's so much fun. Oh, yeah. I was on the set for a couple of days, and uh, everybody was, you know, I mean, there were so many great people on it uh, that were having fun, that were doing, um, you know, kind of cameo shots, like mm -hmm. Mark Cuban and Maria Menounos and uh, Ann Coulter and Mark McGrath, it was just, it was insane on the set, really insane, and we shot it at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles, and I did not get eaten by a shark, I want no. you to know. Did you, were, were you in a bikini at least? No, I was not in a bikini, and I did not get eaten by a shark. Oh man, you're ruining a, an American boy's dreams here. Well, bikini shots are all over Twitter, and uh, I sometimes, back in the day, post some on Instagram, which are kind of fun. And the fans always love that. They love going to Instagram. And I'm Jackie J. Collins on Twitter. So I like to um, interact with my readers, you know, because I know they're all excited about the Sant'Angelo's coming out tomorrow. And I know that they want to hear what I have to say about it. And I want to hear what they have to say about it. Mm, it's a beautiful-looking book. And uh, when you look at the cover, I wonder if that's sort of what your, what your mansion looks like. And it sort of looks like maybe that's you having a martini in the pool with a gun next to you. Well, doesn't one always have a gun next to one? I mean, well, hey, I mean, you would have learned that from Roger Moore on The Saint, right? You appeared oh, with him. Oh, I was on, on The part? Saint, yeah. I had, you know, when I was a teenager, I was an actress, but I always considered myself an out-of-work writer. So I was always gathering this great research. And I remember my father was a theatrical agent. And one day, I was about 15, and he said, we have to go and see this singer that I'm representing. And we went to a house in the country in England, and there was this glorious blue pool, and standing by it was this Adonis, and it happened to be Roger Moore, who was married to the singer. So <laughs> that's yeah. the first time I met Roger. He was a great, uh, great guy, great character. And then years later, I appeared on The Saint with him. Mm -hmm. And I remember he had an Italian wife there. He'd changed wives. <laughs> and the Italian wife sat at the, on the set, and she goes, oh, Roger, Roger, well, who this woman you're kissing? Who's she? <laughs> <laughs> was so the, she wasn't pleased. Was the but I was. was the, yeah, was I had the, a great time. Was the timing ever right for the two of you? No, no, no. Don't you find that in life? There's always someone out there, and the timing is never right. And that's what I try to do in my books. I try to make the timing right, because the late Louis Malle, who was married to Candice Bergen, who appeared in my miniseries, Hollywood Wives, mm -hmm. he sidled up to me one day, and he said, uh, Oh, Miss Collins, I tell you this, you are a raunchy moralist. A raunchy moralist. That. A raunchy moralist. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's true. You know, the bad guys get you know theirs, and uh, the good guys always win. Mm. Well, the the uh, you know bustle dot com, whatever that is, says that this is one of twelve books that will make you better in bed. I think that since you started writing the so-called steamy, raunchy novels, that it's pretty hard to shock people these days, isn't it? I don't aim to shock people. Yeah. I aim to write interesting characters, and you want to know what they do in bed, but I only take you to a certain place, and mm -hmm. then your own sexual fantasy takes over. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be ridiculous to try and shock anybody today when you look at the Internet and what's going on. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of stuff on the Internet that is so anti-female, and I try to make my women strong and interesting and sexy and all the things that women should aspire to be, not what you see on the Internet. You write about real people in disguise, you say. Has anyone ever come back to you and said, I know that was me, and I wish oh, you had Oh, yes. Done that. I've had that happen quite a few times. Uh, when I wrote The Stud, Tom Jones was convinced it was him. I said, no, it's not <laughs> you. <laughs> there are probably a lot of guys the thought they... Probably, I know. Warren Beatty probably thought it was him, too. He did, actually. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> Warren was engaged to my sister at one point, so uh -huh. we were very friendly. But to get back to the book, I'm looking at the cover now, and you remarked that it looked like my house. Does it? It doesn't look like my house, but it does look like my swimming pool. All right. God, I'd love yeah. to go swimming with you sometime. Can we arrange that? <laughs> oh, yeah, we have to do that, yes. I'll write a chapter, and we'll swim side by side. Oh, that would be fantastic. I'll wear, a, I'll wear a bathing cap and one of the, you know, you, you, do you wear a two-piece or one piece? I don't swim, actually, oh. because I'm too busy writing all the time. And I have this great swimming pool sitting there tempting me. Oh. But if I did, I'd probably, I don't know what I'd wear. I'm going to be lonely out be there without you. Naked. <laughs> what, you, you. All right, well, skinny dip then. Yeah, skinny dip. Yeah, why uh, not? You told me to go after my dreams, right? Is that your dream, to skinny dip? Yeah, you're my dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, then uh, read about Lucky because she could be your dream too. She's such a she's such an interesting character, especially in the Saint Angelos, because one of her children well he's not a child, he's a gorgeous Kennedy esque uh twenty five year old and he owns nightclubs and he gets set up for a murder he did not commit by this absolutely incredible, beautiful woman. Hmm. And so Lucky has to solve that problem. Somebody else gets assassinated Lucky has to solve that problem, mm -hmm. and it's uh, you know it's an epic story. There's drug dealers, there's Hollywood starlets. They're all based on real people. You'll be playing the guessing game. Yeah. Uh, just uh, I know you have to go because you're going to get back to writing. But has Lucky ever disappointed you? No, she hasn't. Mm -hmm. And I would like to be her in another life. Yeah. She's such an interesting character. She's such a strong woman, and I think women out there should aspire to be like her because she's not. Uh, she, she's not your normal woman who's going to just say yes to any guy. She's strong, she's sexy, she's vulnerable, and she's wildly beautiful. That's Lucky Sant'Angelo. When Jackie Collins puts pen to paper, we come running. Thank you so much, and I'll see you at the pool.